All right, you guys, chapter 10, circles, 10.1, use properties of tangents. I think all of you guys already know what a circle is. A circle is a set of all points in the plane that are equidistant from a given point. This is my little abbreviation for circles. So if you imagine a point in a certain plane, and then think about all the points that are the same distance from that point. So like this point is the same distance from the center as this point, as this point, as this point, as all of these points. That's what makes a circle. All right, the center, the center of a circle is the point from which all points of the circle are equidistant. So this would be the center. All right, also it's a, it's a good thing to note that whenever you're naming a circle, generally you name it with the center of the circle. Okay. All right, now a radius, I think all of you guys know what a radius is. A segment from the center of a circle to any point on the circle is a radius. So like over here, um, this would be a radius, this would be a radius, this would be a radius. All of these shown are radius, including this. If I were to draw another line, anything from the center to the edge is a radius, okay? Now, a chord is a little bit different. A chord is a segment whose endpoints are on the circle. So, for example, this would be a chord. It doesn't necessarily go through the center. It could just be off to the side somewhere. So that would be a chord. Here's another chord. Those are chords. All right, a diameter. A diameter is a chord that contains the center of the circle. So, for example, this red line here would be a diameter. Also, this is the is the diameter. Sorry, I meant to go through the center there. Or if I drew it like this or like this, any chord that goes through the middle of the circle, the center of the circle. All right, secants and tangents. All right, a secant is a line that intersects a circle in two points. So this line here would be a secant line because it intersects the circle twice. A tangent is a line that intersects a circle in exactly one point, so like this one here. This would be a tangent line because it intersects once. All right, let's do an example. Identify special segments and lines. Tell whether the line, ray, or segment is best described as a radius, chord, diameter, secant, or tangent of circle C. Okay, let's take a look at segment BC. Second, segment BC is right here. This is a radius. BC is a radius because C is on the center and B is a point on the circle. Line EA, that's this line here, whoops. Line EA is a secant because it is a line that intersects the circle in two points. Now, if this, if they had been asking for segment, EA. Notice how there are no arrows. You would say that this is a chord because a chord is a segment. A secant is a line. So because there we're looking at the line, it's going to be a, it's going to be a secant. But if they had asked for this, you would have written chord instead. All right, ray DE. That's this here. Yeah. Difficult to draw straight lines, close enough. All right, ray DE is a tangent ray because it is contained in a line that intersects the circle at only one point. All right, let's go on to page two. Okay, use the diagram to find the given lengths. Radius of circle A. Okay. The radius of circle A would be from the center to the side. So like this would be an example of a radius. It looks like it has two units. The diameter of circle A, well, we'll just continue this all, continue this all the way. Looks like, whoops, disappeared. One, two, three, four units. Another way you could do it is just double the radius. The diameter will always be double the radius. All right, the radius of B, let's change colors. We use red from the center to the edge one two three four which means the diameter would have to be eight because that's all the way across 
All right, I'm going to let you guys do the checkpoint on your own. Let's go on to page three. <clears throat> Tell how many common tangents the circles have and draw them. All right, a common tangent is a tangent that the circles share. Okay, so for example, this one, if I drew a tangent like this, that would be a common tangent because it intersects both circles once. All right, you could also draw a tangent, uh, it it's not a very straight line, like that. Or like this. And imagine that only hits once. Okay, and I think that's the only way. So this one has three common tangents. Okay. This one, you can draw it like this, or same on the other side. Imagine those only hit once. So this has two common tangents. And this one, I, you can only draw it like this. There is really no other way to draw. So this has one common tangent. All right, you guys can do the checkpoint. Let's go on to theorem 10.1. In a plane, a line perpen or sorry, a line is tangent to a circle if and only if the line is perpendicular to a radius of the circle at its endpoints on the circle. So, if you have a radius and you have a tangent and they intersect, they're going to be perpendicular. They're going to make a right angle always. Can you draw a better perpendicular symbol close enough? Okay. Page 4. Verify a tangent to a circle. Okay, in the diagram, segment RS is a radius, all right? So we know that this is a radius of the circle. Is ST tangent to circle R? Now, this is what you need to think about. If this is a tangent line and this is a radius, they have to make a right angle. Have to. Okay, that's what we just learned in the most recent theorem. If this makes a right angle, then we have shown here a right triangle. So we're going to use the converse of the Pythagorean theorem because 10 squared plus 24 squared plus 26 squared, let's write this out over here. We have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. In this case, 10 squared plus 24 squared equals 26 squared. 10 squared, hopefully you guys know, is 100. 24, let's pull out a cal our calculator here. 24 times 24, 576. And 26 squared. Ah. 26 times 26. There we go. 676. I think we're good. 676 does, in fact, equal 676. So, triangle RST is a right triangle. And RS is perpendicular to ST. So, ST is perpendicular to a radius of circle R at its endpoint on circle R. By theorem 10.1, ST is tangent to circle R. Okay? Now, if we had ended up with like 675 equals 676, something that's not true, then we would know that this is not a tangent line. But because it does create a right triangle, which means this does make a right angle, we know that this is a tangent line. Okay, I'll let you guys do the checkpoint. Example five, in the diagram, B is a point of tangency. Okay, so we know that this is a point of tangency. Find the radius R of circle C. So they're telling us, they're telling us that this is a right angle. We know, or you know from theorem 10.1, that AB is perpendicular to BC. So triangle ABC is a right triangle. You can use the Pythagorean theorem. So um, I guess I'll, we could just do it over here. This is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. Okay? AC is R plus 49. That's the whole hypotenuse. BC is R. AB is 77. So, this is where you gotta have, you're going to have to remember a few things from Algebra 1. R plus 49 squared is the same as R plus 49 times 
r plus 49. You're going to have to FOIL. So, that's kind of messy. Let me try this one again. So I'm going to have r squared plus 49r plus 49r plus 49 squared, which is... Twenty four oh one. I'm going to go ahead and write this in here. So r squared, oh, there, they have it already simplified. So 49 plus 49, that gives me, um, I'll just do this by hand, 98. Okay, so r squared plus 98r plus uh, 2401. Okay, equals r squared plus 77 squared, 59.29. Okay, I'm going to subtract r squared from both sides. That'll cancel that out. I'm also going to subtract 2401 from both sides. But I'll cancel this out, so I'm left with 98R equals 8253, So now I'm going to divide each side by 98. Let's pull out the calculator. Thirty-five twenty-eight divided by ninety-eight. Thirty-six. So the radius is thirty-six. All right, last page. Tangent segments from a common external point are congruent. Okay, so anytime you have two tangent lines intersecting, the segments they make are congruent to each other. So, for example, QR is tangent to circle C at R, and uh, QS is tangent to circle C at S. Find the value of X. The theorem we just learned says that these segments are congruent. So, 32 equals 3X plus 5. They didn't give us a step in here. If I subtract 5 from each side, I'm going to get 27 equals 3X, then I can divide by 3. 27 divided by 3 is 9. I'll let you guys do the checkpoint, and that's all.